Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome for another Quick Tank review, this time of the Hellcat. So what do you need to know about the Hellcat? It's a very weakly armoured, fast tier 6 tank destroyer, with a pretty punchy gun for tier 6, that's capable of outplaying its opponents. I would not recommend this tank to a beginner, but maybe if you're a player who feels like they want a new challenge in World of Tanks and a new tool to dominate their enemies, then maybe the Hellcat is for you. For all you advanced Hellcat players out there, I'd just like to show my loadout. Obviously we use the top gun, the 90mm, in my opinion is the only way to go with the increased penetration. I use a rammer, and because this is an open top tank, it's obviously not able to use vents. I like to use camouflage and I like to use binoculars. I value binoculars, overcoated optics, as I've explained before in many of my videos because I like to do static scouting rather than passive scouting or active scouting. One thing I also like to do in this tank is I like to load the cheap fuel. I don't use the high octane stuff as in my opinion this is very 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 important to use on the Hellcat. 5% increase to engine power and turret traverse speed and as I'm going to highlight to you guys the turret traverse is one of the biggest problems of this tank and anything you can do to minimize this disadvantage will be very much to your advantage. I know that some players might to use cola instead but it's in, up to you. I'm fairly cheap I just like to use the cheap fuel, small first aid kit and small repair kit in my Hellcat. For my ammo loadout I like to use 20 regular rounds, 9 premium rounds and 1 HE round. The HE round is just for an interrupt or finishing off a tank with very very low health. The calibre of the gun is quite good on the Hellcat for a tier 6 tank, so some of the splash damage can be quite useful. So let's take a look at what this tank is all about. Now the tank as a tier 6 tank destroyer has got pretty low health. 570 means that it can barely take two hits from most tanks of its tier. A T-150 will two hit you, a KV-1S will two hit you, your opposing number, a Hellcat, will three hit you. This health is made even worse by the fact that this tank has 13 millimeters of hull armor all around. If an HE round hits the front of your tank, it will penetrate. If the HE round hits the rear of your tank, it will penetrate. If an HE round hits your tracks, there's a chance that it might absorb some of the damage. But if you hit the upper surface above the track, the HE round will go in. Now the turret armor frontally is quite troll, it's 76mm, but that's the only kind of armor you're really going to get on this tank, as your side armor is 31 and your rear turret armor is 44. If you're engaging a Hellcat, seriously consider loading HE and just plowing straight through the front of the tank. Even at range, you're going to do some serious damage to this tank, and if you're lucky enough to have an HE round that does significantly more damage than your AP round, and your penetration is 40 millimeters or greater, you will be able to breach the Hellcat and probably wreck the crew or wreck the tank before its crew will even die with only 570 hit points. So that's enough about the disadvantages and you know with disadvantages such as that this tank must have some redeeming factors especially considering I specifically grinded back up this line to get the Hellcat. As you can clearly see in my tech tree, I have not researched the T28 prototype yet. Why is that? Because a while ago, the current T34 used to be the tier 9 heavy tank, and the T30 was over here. It was the tier 10 heavy tank before they introduced the T110E5. So what happened? Anyone who had the T30, like I did, got a free tier 9 turreted TD. They didn't have any of these other new tanks that were implemented into the game researched. And they were also given an M103 and a T110E5. And they were also given a free T34 premium tank. But don't be bitter guys, I don't think anything like that is ever going to happen again. <laughs> that was back in the unpopular days of World of Tanks where the compensation was high. So, what I'm telling you guys is, I decided to grind my way up the tree just to get to the Hellcat. That's how good this tank is. So let's go over the advantages of this tank. It's got a 460 brake horsepower engine, which is amazing when you consider how light this thing is. Not having very much hull armor is beneficial. This tank weighs 20 tons when fully equipped. That means that this 460 brake horsepower engine is able to get this thing to move. When you combine this with a 72 km an hour top speed limit, this thing is able to bomb it around, as I'm going to be showing you in the gameplay footage in just a few minutes. Now that's not the only highlight of this tank. This tank is a tank destroyer and it has a fully traversable turret. The turret is able to traverse at 16 degrees a second 
So that's about the same as, for example, a tier 10 heavy turret traverse, a German tier 10 heavy turret tra traverse. So don't expect the turret to turn very quickly, but at least with preparation, you can be prepared for any situation and have a degree of flexibility if you've been tracked to still track the target at long distances. Now this tank has a fantastic punchy gun, a 90mm which has 240 alpha damage and fires 7.5 rounds a minute. Basically this is the same kind of gun that for example a Persian gets, a tier 8 medium tank with the same kind of DPM. Now the penetration on this tank is, it's alright for a tier 6 tank destroyer. 160mm is enough to get through the front of most tanks that you can engage. It won't for example get through the front of an IS-3 which this tank can meet, but there are a hell of a lot of tanks that are even higher tier than the Hellcat that don't have the penetration to penetrate the front of an IS-3. However, this 90mm has amazing flexibility with the 243mm of penetration with its premium rounds. That's why I like to keep uh, a good amount of APCR rounds, even though they will cost you 4,400 a shot. If it's the difference between you winning the game and not, and you need to get through the front of any tank that you can meet, which you definitely can with your APCR rounds, then you really should use them. Don't overlook the HE rounds on this tank. The HE rounds do 320 damage which is over 50% higher than your regular rounds. And considering that they've got 45 millimeters of penetration, for example, if you shoot an enemy Hellcat with your HE rounds, you will do 320 average damage to them, which means that you have a very good chance of two hitting the enemy tank instead of three hitting them. This will also allow you to one hit some artillery that you otherwise couldn't. So strategic use of that HE round is required. Now the accuracy of the Hellcat is all right for a tank destroyer, it's not amazing. It's got 0.35 accuracy at 100 meters, but it has amazing aim time. 1.7 aim time. That is absolutely incredible. And you guys are gonna be able to see how I can put that to great effect firing clutch shots off. So now that you know everything that you need to know about the Hellcat, let's take a look at some gameplay. So let's take a look at our first gameplay video in the Hellcat. You can see that we're on the new Redshire encounter. We are against over half the enemy are in tier eight tanks. This is not a very good matchup. I'm playing in a platoon with Ike and Z. Big shout out to you two. And we've been matched up against two KV-1Ss and a tier 7 tank. So yep, there are less than two tier 6 enemies on the enemy team. And this is going to be very interesting. One thing I would like to highlight is that we are playing against Kibia Kotako. You may remember the ST1 driver who submitted a fantastic replay in the first replay competition. The first one that we saw. So a big shout out to that guy. And it's a very small world when you're meeting people who are submitting replays and performing so well in your competitions. But that's the last nice thing I'm going to say about Mr. Kivio Kotako because we're playing against each other now, dude. All fun and games are over. This is business. So, guys, you're seeing me absolutely shift in the Hellcat here. Look at this. Look at this down the slope. Up to 70, going along the flat, getting into an aggressive position. I am faster than most scout tanks. I'm able to get into position so quickly in this tank. And you seeing me put that into my advantage. We have spotted Kivya Kotako. Zeltz puts a fantastic shot into him. And I set up my camp. Here we go. I'm just chilling. And you will see me chilling. I'm getting spots on these enemy tanks. Should I fire? Should I fire? Should I fire? No, no, I really shouldn't fire. One of the reasons why you see me playing very cautiously in this game is that I don't have six Sense yet on the Hellcat. And I fully recommend that you get six Sense on the Hellcat. You really need six Sense on this tank because it can't afford to take hits. It's got barely any health and it's got no armor apart from on the front of its turret. So we can see where we spotted that KV-1S down to very low health. And now we're spotting this Black Prince. He's getting absolutely murdered right now. All of these guys keep getting lit up and they don't understand what's happening. How are we getting spotted? Where are the enemies? They probably can't see anybody right now. They're looking around, getting absolutely destroyed because we've got fantastic view range. We've set up in a bush. We've got 100% commander and binoculars and you know, with 370 meters, that means we're gonna spot them at this kind of distance. If I was using coated optics, I might not have been getting the spots on those guys. And that's why I like to use binoculars. I like to do 
passive scouting and active fighting. So Kivio Kotako is down to 79% there in his IS-6. And I just spotted that there's a KB-4 making a hero run. Oh, I'm calling in some fire on him using my assist me key. And unfortunately the KB-4 managed to sneak down. So we can see that Kibio Kotako is actually playing in a platoon with a bunch of tier 8 guys. So I was worried about them. The Super Pershing is in a platoon with him. The Yagtiger 88 is in a platoon with him. I really thought that this game would be very hard to carry considering that the enemy platoon were over two tiers higher than our platoon. But looks like the Black Prince is spotting the KV-4 and he's getting shot at by everybody and there he goes. They've just lost one of their most powerful tanks and we can see that Kibioko Taco has been getting beasted down, down to 19% health. He must be getting spotted by the Ferdinand or by Zance. and unfortunately Z is starting to have a bit of pressure put on him. He's in a lot of trouble now. The enemy team have taken the ridge line and marauding along it, while our team have taken up a defensive location for me and my spots. So I decide enough is enough, let's do this. As Kivio Kotako has taken the fall, I decide to push the tempo on this KB3 and this Super Persian. So there's the KV-3 and oh god a wild super Pershing appears who knows me. What are you going to do? You're going to track him right on top of the ridge line. Oh dear my friend. We'll retrack him. We'll retrack him again. And you just don't have the gun depression. We'll retrack him again. And my friend finishes him off. There you go, that's how to make someone who's two tiers higher than you, has played 13,000 games, 55% wins and 1,300 efficiency, not feel too clever about themselves. So that just evens up the game, we're turning it around now, and the enemies see that really they don't have an opportunity to wait around, they have to put pressure on the cap. And we see a KV-1S about to do an amazing hero run here, the KV-1S 5,000 games, under 800 efficiency, but you know, everyone can have his day. He just interrupted the cap, taking out the Black Prince, and he's not done yet. He wants more. He's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the T-32. We put a clutch shot into him there, though. He's not feeling so confident now. But he really wants to interrupt that T-32, and he manages it. Well played. Well played to that KV-1S to basically save the game. Now it's completely even again. I take a blind shot to try and hit the enemy there, and now I start to work the T-29. We can see the fantastic aim time on this tank allows us to almost keep firing as soon as we've aimed. And that's exactly the situation that you want. Putting side shots into a Jagdtiger 88 in a Hellcat is... That's, that, that is World of Tanks for the Hellcat. So we can see a T-69. A very dangerous tank. And Kibia Katako's remaining Yagtig 88 platoon mate is chilling on the opposite ridge. We can see that the T29 is trying to progress into position. We're trying to feather a shot. We wait for it. I decide to load some APCR rounds. This game is pretty close and I want to try and finish it off in style. I felt that I might need the extra penetration to go through the front of the T-29 at this kind of an angle. But I guess I'm firing down on his plate, so it's not too much of a big deal. So we put one into him. We can see he's going for us, so I reverse and get my tracks in and he misses us, and he's out. So now the game is firmly in our favour. The enemy tanks are getting whittled down one by one. I figured that I must have re-stealthed now. 
and so I go out into a bush to get some more spots. One flush into the side of the Panther 2 there. I reload uh, an AP round, preparing to take out the Panther 2. My team secure his kill. And we're trying to track the IS-3 here. I aim for his tracks and I fire one. Not sure if we tracked him there or not. We won't know. And I go forwards and try and take a hold down location. And there we can see a Jagtag 88. We've loaded an APCR round for his front plate. We penetrate the shot. And the game ends. What a fantastic result in the Hellcat. Let's take a look at some post-game stats. So that was our mastery badge in the Hellcat. We got over 4,100 experience for our double with a premium account. We were successfully able to put damage on very prominent tier 8 players. We got a patrol duty medal, which means that we did a lot of scouting. And as we can clearly see here, we were able to pick up 2,200 damage and do nearly 4,000 spotting damage. An absolute monster result in the Hellcat with a fantastic 4k double. I really showcase the strengths of the Hellcat here. Using its speed to get into position, it can passively scout if it's equipped in the right way. And then when the fight gets going, it needs to use its speed and its flexibility with its traversable turret and great gun depression to outplay its opponents. So guys, that's not all. I'm gonna give you more action, more replays. Let's do it. Let's go. So let's take a look at some more gameplay in the Hellcat. Here we see that we're playing on El Haluf. It's an encounter game. I'm playing with Ike and Jingles. As you can clearly see, we are in a tier 8 game. The enemy have got three tier 8 tanks and a hell of a lot of tier 7 tanks. So, pretty much the matchup couldn't be worse. But as you guys are going to see, because we're playing a Hellcat, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Your armor, it doesn't matter what tier tank is shooting you, it's going to penetrate you unless it hits you in the gun mantle. We can see we're able to put off a pretty clutch shot there into the ELC. I'm trying to back up Ike as quickly as I can. And there we can see there's a 110. Their 110 is a, a good player. He's a Unicum. So I'm trying to target him and put as much damage into him as we can. So we've hit three out of three shots. Two of them penetrated, including that side penetration on the 110 there, which is a, a great result. Fortunately, Ike died getting into position but it's almost worth it for the trading that he's done to try and get that 110 to half health considering that 110 is very capable of mega carrying this game. So here you can see the excellent gun depression. I'm able to aim down. 110 realizes that I'm going to try and get him and he pulls back and we set him on fire and he uses his fire extinguisher. And there goes the 110 tag teamed by me and Jingles. Jingles takes him out in the back there. That was far too much lead on that shot. The aim time on the Hellcat is wonderful, and even though the turret turns quite slowly, the aim time makes up for it. And there you go. That is World of Tanks right there for you. Giving a fantastic amount of lead to one of the smallest tanks in the game, going at full speed along the valley. We were able to um, take it out. So this game is already looking really good. We've taken out their best player putting the game heavily in our favor and I decide it's man mode time. I'm going to help out this KV-5. I aim another shot and we get a bit more fire damage. Can you believe it? We help out that KV-5, probably saving him. And our speed, going along there at 50 to 60 down that slope and across the water, allows us to get out of harm's way from the snipers on the ridgeline. So, I'm being quite aggressive and now I'm going to show you a fantastic opportunity to make this location viable for tanks to scout. You knock down the tree at a tangent to the rock, which allows you to get into the bush. Now we're going to aim up through the bush. You see I'm getting into position here. I do have six cents on my Hellcat, I think, at this point. And we're in the fallen bush. And our binoculars just activated, and we've got shots. Look at this. We're spotting for our team. I'm not going to fire unless I know it's a penetrating shot. Not going to fire, not going to fire. I fired slightly too late there. I pull back and I wait for my vision to reset. I decide to reverse to get spots, but then I go forwards again. Now it is man mode time as you can see. 
I've seen that half of the enemy team have wilted away. We're leading by five tanks. When you're leading by five tanks, I like to push the tempo a little bit. There we can see a clutch shot in third person mode up into the FCM 50T's lower plate. And he's going man mode on us. Whoa, he really wants this. I put one shot into him and avoid the ram. <laughs> Whoa, that's not good for him. And now I see an opportunity to get some sniping shots into this IS. You can see he's looking at me, so I fire and I pull back as quickly as I can. I know that he's going to have quite a long reload, so I try and aim for my second shot. But we don't quite have the opportunity to fire twice. I'm feeling like I'm on a roll here and the enemy are absolutely wilting away, so I want to be aggressive. If I die here, it's not really going to lose us the game. I just want to push the tempo as fast as I can and get as much out of this game as I can. So we're able to put a shot there on the IS as he falls down. Not sure if I was the one who tracked him, but I know that I'm the one who's going to finish him. So you guys are seeing the wonderful gun that the Hellcat gets, the flexibility that it can use the gun with, with its excellent gun depression, fully traversable turret, and the speed that the Hellcat has to get around the battlefield. Now look at the minimap, look at Jingles, how fast he's able to traverse the terrain. He was here and <laughs> just the Hellcat, the pure speed of it, he's able to come and back me up really quickly. We track the Tiger P in a position where he can't shoot me. He's going, oh my god, my gun depression, what? And so I decide to put one into his weak point, which is the flat part of his turret, just outside the gun mantlet. And I want to be cheeky here. I know I can take one shot from him, so I'm just waiting for Jingles to catch up with me. I'm trying to get him to fire at me so I can make um, a shot happen. Where's the shot? Where's the shot? Come on, why don't you fire at me, Mr. Tiger P? So now we've got Jingles. There's only one worse thing about being trolled by a Hellcat, and that's being trolled by two. So me and Jingles are talking this through. He fires at me, he misses, and now we're in. Aim at his cupola, make the shot happen. And something that I didn't expect happened, the Hummel just absolutely destroyed me. So I tell Jingles, I think, in the live version of this, that I had to pull back now. Aim one at the side of his turret, and make the kill happen. Oops, there's a full, well, 50% health, T29. We have his bum. And we get shut down by the sneaky Hummel, who remains stealth right up until then. He gets executed by the IS-3. So, we had a, a pretty good game there. We were very aggressive. And it really did pay off. We're seeing Jingles finish off the game, taking out this T-29 who just barely avoided the artillery. And that's it. That's all she wrote for the enemy team. Let's take a look at some post-game stats. So this was a double, and we nearly got 5,000 experience for our double with our premium account. Absolute monster result. We got 60,000 credits in a tier 8 game. It was just a brilliant result. And that's the thing about the Hellcat. Because it can do so much damage to tanks which are higher tier than it, <laughs> it's just... It's just able to really get some fantastic results. I haven't had a godlike game in the Hellcat. I really think that this is one of those tanks that can breach the 3 to 4k mark. If you've seriously got some skills in this and you get one of those godlike matchups. I've not actually played that many games in this tank. I think I've maybe played 20 or 30 games and I've already got many games over 2k and multiple games which are, we're looking at 2,500 experience. We were able to pull off 3,357 damage that game. We fired 18 shots, we hit 16, and of those 16, 15 penetrated the target. We were also able to do 1,727 spotting damage, and as we can clearly see here, we were able to absolutely dominate the game, doing the most damage on our team by far, as well as all the extra spotting damage that we did. Jingles had a fantastic game in his Hellcat as well, it's no surprise, it's an absolute beast of a tank, and it's quite easy to perform well in it. So guys, I hope you've appreciated this review on the Hellcat. I hope I've shown you some good gameplay, I've shown you multiple replays. You can see versions of these games played live on my Twitch.tv channel. I suggest going over there if you want to see how I actually handled the situation as it happened. 
If this video has been entertaining or helpful to you, please consider rating it down below. I'd really appreciate it. And I absolutely fully recommend the Hellcat to you. Definitely pick up this tank. I would recommend it, as I've said, to a medium to advanced skill level of player. And I feel that this is not a very good tank to try and learn the game in. It's a tank that a player will pick up who has already mastered a lot of other tanks and wants to have this as a bit of a tank that he can go and have some fun with. I might be so bold to say that this is a tank that's quite overpowered. I think the fact that it's got as much DPM as a tier 8 medium tank is pretty brutal considering that it does have a really good view range of 370 and the ability to traverse the battle with such pace. I fully recommend this tank and it's definitely something that you should pick up if you're looking to have a tank that's a lot of fun and able to dominate the battle. So just a big thank you to you for watching. Thank you so much. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.